So I'm seeing the Tom Cruise movie and I'm like, hey, this is like the book Dark Future. This is really what our what the book is uh, talking about. Probably about half of it is the new technology and what AI can do and how it's going to be used to um, manipulate you in ways that you don't even know you're being manipulated. Uh, and it will predict everything. Now, I want to break this down, and I don't want to get too scientific. Stu, tell me if we get too scientific here. Sure, go ahead. Uh, you know, because <laughs> once you go to Kamala Harris, it can get complex quickly. So the White House had a roundtable on artificial intelligence. And as Kamala would say, that's a table that is round. And I love round tables. Anyway, uh, she's at a round table on artificial intelligence with some of the biggest minds on this. And here's how she explains it. AI is kind of a fancy thing. It's, first of all, it's two letters. It means <laughs> artificial intelligence. But ultimately what it is, is it's about machine learning. And so the machine is taught. Mm. And part of the issue here is what information is going into the machine that will then determine, and, and we can predict then, if we think about what, machine, what information is going in, what then will be produced in terms of decisions and opinions no. um, that may be made through that process. Mm. No, no. But that's a cute little effort. She was born to be a first grade teacher. Don't you think? I mean, that's really, I mean, I think that's the grade level where she topped out. Um, but she's perfect as a first grade teacher. I want to tell all of you experts about AI. First of all, it's two letters, two happy letters. One's an A, one's an I. What does that mean? Well, it's fancy. It's very fancy, kids. It AI, two letters, but it actually stands for two words <laughs> and words are made up of letters and this letter a means artificial that means fake and intelligence that means something i don't have she's born to be a first grade teacher because everything she says sounds like it's geared to a first grader my gosh. And then machine learning. This is, let me tell you a little bit about machine learning. First of all, it's a machine. No, it's really not a machine. And I know you mean it as a machine, but it's not a machine. It's machines and it's learning. It's two words, a machine and learning. I didn't mean to put a uh, in front of machine because that would be three words, even though a uh, is just a letter, and that letter is uh, a, but it doesn't stand for the same a as in artificial kids. So um, she says we can put stuff into it and we'll, we'll know what comes out. That's not true. I don't know if she's ever heard of uh, AI hallucinations. That's what's happening with chat GPT right now. We don't know how it works, okay? The experts don't know. Now, I'm sure Kamala does, because she's so smart, uh, but nobody really knows how this works. It's a machine teaching itself. You put in information, and then it learns on its own. This is something Elon Musk called summoning the demon. Now, I don't know. That sounds like something I would like to do every day. Summon the demon. Uh, this is from page 262 from the very uh, astute uh, writings of uh, one of the greatest scientific minds of today uh, named Glenn Beck. And here we are on book review. Uh, and we're just going to read a little bit uh, from this fantastic new book that is available everywhere, including glensnewbook.com. Purchase it now. Uh, depending on who you talk to, the development of artificial intelligence with human-like abilities is either considered to be the holy grail of technological achievements, the discovery that could unleash an unprecedented era of prosperity, or mark the beginning of the end of humanity. 
For example, at a symposium hosted by MIT, Elon Musk said, Artificial intelligence, AI, is really kind of a fancy thing. It's too let No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he said, it's akin to summoning the demon. He explained, I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. If I were to guess what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. So we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. Increasingly, scientists think there should be some regulatory oversight, maybe at the national and international level, just to make sure that we don't do something very foolish. Now, let me ask Elon Musk this. If I might depart from this brilliant, brilliant book, um, let me ask something. Uh, Do you want somebody like Kamala Harris or anybody in Congress, I like Chuck Schumer, actually coming up with laws about it? Do you think they will even begin to understand it? They can't work their iPhone. Anyway, scientists think there should be some regulatory oversight. With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon In all those stories where there's a guy with a pentagram and the holy water, it's like, yeah, he's sure he can control the demon, but it doesn't ever work out. Finally, a guy who's watched a movie. Stephen Hawking, perhaps more uh, accomplished scientist, uh, scientist of the past half century, warned the BBC the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. It would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution could not compete and would be superseded. So we go deeply into this in uh, the new book and how it is going to work. But I I just have to tell you, go watch Mission Impossible. The only problem with the Mission Impossible thing is, is like, don't worry, you know, all we got to do is we got to, we can turn it off with its uh, original code. No, you can't. No, you can't. When, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vic Rames, Rhymes, what's the black guy in Mission Impossible? (gasps) Did he say black guy? Oh my gosh. How dare him even notice color? Although he should note its color, because that's all that matters. If he doesn't note its color, he's a racist. If he does, he's a racist. Simultaneously, so anyway, the most and least important thing about a person, uh, Glenn, of course, is their skin color. Uh, Ving Rames, I believe, yeah. is who, who you're looking for. Ving Rames, yeah. Okay, so Ving says, you know, I've got it on this. I got it on this hard drive, but I gotta go and get way away from anything online. And if I can track it down, I'm going to give it its original code, and it'll shut it off. No, Ving, it doesn't work that way. See, the idea with artificial intelligence, and the movie really, really makes a good case on what it will be like. It will know everything about you. It will be able to predict you because of companies like Google and Facebook. They are collecting mountains of information. Your refrigerator, if you have a new refrigerator and it's a smart uh, refrigerator, it's collecting information on you. So it will be able to predict you. It will know you and know exactly what you'll do. So it can, you can never escape it. Oh, well, we're going to use the original code. We're just going to reboot the system. That won't work because it will know you are going to try to do that. Yeah, that's the thing with AI. It just kind of tends to know exactly where you're going, right? Uh, and, uh, I, you know, despite the fact that we can come up with these easy, simple solutions, there's no, there's no clarity long term whether this is going to actually play out in a way that benefits humanity or or really honestly turns into something that we want to keep around and the question is how far we get down this road do we eventually get to this place where they can't turn it around you know we can all kind of speculate here but the fact is that even scientists Even people who have created AI, even people who have gone down this road for decades, who are the people who put this foundation together, 
they don't even seem to know where this is going. And this, the mo- probably the most terrifying part of all of this is even people, scientists like Kamala Harris don't even seem to know. I mean, Kamala seems to know that the A stands for artificial and the I stands for intelligence. But beyond that, we don't know how far this could go and what could occur. Uh, Now, we know that machines are taught. That we know from Kamala Harris. But we don't necessarily know too much more than that. And I I mean, you watch people uh, try to utilize this in their day-to-day lives. You know, I've I've been talking to people about how they're using AI. And and, uh, one friend talked uh, about how she had to work on some project. It was, you know, a marketing newsletter type of project. And, you know, she's starting out. She didn't really want to get into it. She's, she knew it was going to take a couple hours. And someone told her, well, why not try Jet Cheap BT? That, that'll, that'll knock it out in 30 seconds. And it did. And it was close. And her boss loved it. Hey, who knows where this goes? And you can, when you talk about, you know, look, Kamala Harris's point aside here, what you input really is important. At the end of the day, This is something that the left has realized. They remember going back to the early days of the internet and the early days of the internet were, you know, it was a wild west and whatever reason our government did one good thing, which was to kind of codify it as a wild west to let this thing develop into what it's become the good and the bad. There's been plenty of bad with the internet. Well, what the left looks at when they look at this, they say, and this is something that's talked about in dark future, what they see when they look at the, the story of the internet is why didn't we wake up? Why didn't we get involved earlier? Why didn't we realize we should implement all of our left-wing ideology into this stuff at the very beginning and let it grow the way we want it to grow? They see it as a missed opportunity to put all this stuff in at the beginning. And now they're looking at AI as a second bite at the apple. Here comes AI. We can step in. We can put all this stuff in sort of at the recipe level, and then the cake comes out on the other side uh, of the oven uh, with uh, that t- it tastes a little bit more friendly to the way we want it to taste. They're seeing this as a giant opportunity, and that is sort of where we are now. I will say, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. He did a, um, he was asked, he was talking to, uh, trying to figure out something with AI and decided to ask it, I think, a pretty important question. Which was, if you needed to travel 300 miles, and there's two groups trying to travel this 300 miles. One group was riding on a camel. The other group was riding on 1,000 bunny rabbits. And the question was, who gets there first? Well, AI did the math on this. They crunched the numbers and said... The, of course, the people traveling on the thousand bunny rabbits would get there first because, you know, that's a thousand bunny rabbits and they did a thousand times whatever it is, 10 miles an hour and came up with it would they would do the 300 miles in 18 minutes and the camel would take much longer than that. Now, we are at the very beginning of this where they still think you can ride bunny rabbits for 300 miles, but soon we are going to be at a place where AI is able to do a lot of these tasks much more competently and also is going to be something that is very difficult for this society to resist. I think at times we overwhelm, we kind of, we look at, I don't know, the people that we hang out with. Maybe, uh, Maybe you're hanging out with a lot of people who are pretty smart. But think about the average person. The average person who is maybe, the average person who voted for Joe Biden in 2020. That person, picture them in your mind for a second. Is that a person who's going to resist the charms of AI? Do you have confidence in that? Because I certainly don't. (laughs) I don't know. We are not at a place. This is is not the Ben Franklin times where everyone knew the Constitution and everyone knew the history that went into building the Constitution. You go back and look at the school tests from these ages and you'd see... Things that were absolutely stunning, shocking, that the, that the average person knew. Advanced mathematics and, and history and philosophy, that's all gone. 
like, right now, the main point of contention between people is which Kardashian's, you know, butt are you looking at at an Instagram post? That's essentially the main amount of research most of America does. And we have to look at them and somehow figure out whether they're going to be able to pull off the resistance of AI technology. They're not. And the left knows this. And so they're working very, very hard to uh, put together a a foundation that feeds what they want out of the future. A lot of this is talked about in Dark Future. It's available now, by the way, uh, everywhere across the country in bookstores or wherever you get your books online. Make sure to check it out.